Ah, uh, my lords and ladies, dear patrons, I am Lord Bloodraw, and you have come home to the Cathode Zone, where each week we will explore the shadowy depths of old-time TV. <laughs> Many people over the years have yearned to run away and join the circus. Some, who aim a bit lower, want to run away and join the carnival. Of course, the main difference between a circus and a carnival is a circus has clowns, animal acts, and acrobats. A carnival can have the same, only with fewer teeth and more tattoos. Anyway, tonight's tale is about a man who wants to run away with the carnival, only to realize he should have ran from the carnival. <laughs> From the OTTV series, Way Out, comes a tale of romance and the macabre, all for the price of one thin dime. <laughs> the tale is entitled Sideshow, and the show's host is none other than the respected author Raoul Dahl, who gave us Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and James and the Giant Peach. <laughs> this series, Way Out, which aired in the same year as The Twilight Zone, highlights Mr. Dahl's darker fantasies. <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, from the dim, distant year of 1961 comes the Way Out episode, Sideshow. Out is brought to you by L&M. L&M unlocks a new world of fresh smoking pleasure every time you light up. And now, our host, Ruol Dahl. How are you? Our play tonight is called Sideshow. And it's a rather curious coincidence that only two days ago, when I was in London, I cut something out of the newspaper on this very subject. Here it is. William George Dobson, aged 54, a bank manager living in Pimlico, was brought before the magistrate yesterday, charged with having broken into one of the sideshows at Lonigan Circus on Monday night. Mr. Lonigan himself was in court to give evidence. When I apprehended the culprit, he said, he was actually inside the cage where I keep my highly dangerous King Cobra, and the silly ass was trying to coax the snake into a large suitcase with his umbrella. The magistrate then asked the accused what he had intended to do with the cobra after he'd got it into the suitcase. I was going to take it home as a surprise for my wife, Mr. Dobson answered. He was released with a caution. I can't help wondering, can you, exactly how Mrs. Dobson is going to make out in the days to come? Anyway, here is our play, Sideshow, by Elliot Baker and it's way out. Start fresh with L&M. Stay fresh with L&M. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoke and pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with L&M. With a touch of a light to an L&M, you unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Do away with dried out taste for good. The secret flavor seal. L&M's special way of moisturizing tobacco to seal in natural tobacco freshness and flavor. L&M burns slower, smokes cooler. And L&M's modern miracle tip means the cleanest, freshest taste possible. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking Start fresh, stay fresh with L&M. Fresh tasting, best tasting L&M in pack or box. Here we go, the next 
next performance about to commence for your pleasure and amazement. You gotta see it to believe it, and even then you won't want to. See the strangest fish in captivity, the wonder fish that changes color right before your eyes. Hold it, Betty, hold it, hold it. See a real execution. Like the only the French can do it. Well, little buddy. See the one and only Cassandra, Cassandra, the electric woman. It takes 10,000 volts to keep her alive. You ought to see my electric bill, but never mind. The management believes in sparing no expense to bring you these attractions, but all it costs you is one thin dime. Hey, come on, this is too good to pass up. Yeah, you never better, inv better investment. Really? <laughs> now, how about you, sir? Yes, I mean you. What do you say? The next performance is just about to begin. Only one dime. Come on, you'll be sorry if you don't see Cassandra. Uh, you'll never regret it. Anybody else? Anybody else? Who's next to see the biggest show in town? How about it? Let's go. Hold your horses, buddy. Hold your horses. Okay, folks. Here we go. And stay close together. We don't want to lose anybody this trip. <laughs> That's right, this rare fish changes from gray to pink to red and back to gray again. When? Some of the world's greatest scientists have come here to see this fish and even they can't figure out how it's done. Yeah, well, when does it change color? Every three months, like clockwork. Every three months. It's only a stickleback. Now, if you'll just follow me. What's a stickleback? It's just a little fish. We use them in zoology class. Right this way, folks, and I will show you loud guillotine. Hey, that thing back there is only a stickleback. What do you want for a dime, buddy? Moby Dick? Anybody with a weak heart who faints easy is advised that the management assumes no liability. Are you ready, folks? Ah, you're in luck today. It's a female victim this time. Are you ready, folks? The blade is up. The head is on the block. And here we go. Hey, hey, it's only a dummy. Look, see? I'll say. At least you could have made her young and pretty. She was. Once. There you are, sweetheart. This way, folks. You are about to witness our stellar attraction. The one and only Cassandra. Cassandra, the electric woman. The woman who stays alive without a drop of blood in her veins. Kept alive only by electricity. AC or DC? <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy, have your little laugh. There's a comedian in every crowd. But when these curtains open up, you will feast your eyes on the eighth wonder of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the thrill of a lifetime. The one and only Cassandra. And there she is. Beautiful Cassandra. At least she was beautiful until she lost her head. It's just another dummy. You hear that, Cassandra? I called you a dummy. Show him, Cassandra. She moved her hand. That's right, madam. And if you look closely, you'll see that she's breathing. She is, Ronnie. <laughs> the whole thing's a fake. It's a real woman, all right, but they do that head bit with mirrors. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our performance. Thank you for your interest and courteous attention. Leave by that exit, if you please. <laughs> what a flea bag. All things are jip. This stuff was old fashioned a hundred years ago. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Don't go. You mean me? Yes. Don't leave me. But he said that... Please, come closer. I don't want him to hear. He didn't say you could talk. He knows I won't talk for him. Why should I? After what he's done to me. Look at me. It's done with mirrors, isn't it? Everything's done with mirrors. I think he's coming. I'd better not stay here. He might get mad. Oh, will you come back? I, I don't know. Uh, goodbye, Miss Cassandra. Oh, come back, please. Are you ready, folks? 
It was nice meeting you. Tomorrow night. Come back tomorrow night. See the one and only Cassandra. Cassandra the electric woman. Beautiful Cassandra. At least she was beautiful until she lost her head. Come on, Carrie, you don't have to come home forever. Stay out the rest of your life. The only thing I ask, Carol, is that you don't lie to me. I can't stand lies. I won't have you coming home tell me you had to work late. I didn't say I was working. No, you didn't say anything. You just wanted me to assume it. No, I didn't, Edna. Not much. Don't pretend with me, Harold. I can't stand pretense. <coughs> I know, Edna. Where'd you have dinner? In the cafeteria? Yes. What'd you eat? Stuffed cabbage. With your stomach. You deserve every pain you get. And don't come to me for sympathy. I suppose after you went to a movie and filled yourself up with popcorn. No. Don't lie to me, Harold. I didn't go to a movie. Next thing you know, you'll be pretending you have a girlfriend. Maybe I have. Mm, that'll be the day. I did speak to a woman tonight. Where were you, Harold? There's a carnival in town. Carnival? You left me here alone worrying about you all night and you went to a carnival? Well, you know how I like carnivals, Edna. You're a child. You've never grown up. That's your trouble. Car carnival? Well, I'm surprised you didn't quit your job and go join it. Then you can spend all your time with a sideshow. Go on, go on, go live in a tent. I almost did. Oh, I don't mean tonight. And once when I was 17, there was this carnival in town. And just before they were ready to pull out, the boss said he could use an extra hand. I almost took that job. But I went to business college instead and became a bookkeeper. It's not interesting. Harold, you ought to write a book about your life. They still fascinate me. I don't know what it is. The calliope music, the always traveling, the strange people. Oh, thank you, dear. You like strange people? And you like freaks? Well, why don't you go live with your mother and sister? Because they belong in a circus. Oh, not a circus, Edna, a carnival. There's a difference. Harold, you're always contradicting me. I didn't mean to contradict you, Edna. Please. I want to go to sleep. Sorry. Who was that woman? Hmm? That woman you spoke to. Was she pretty? Mm, not in a conventional way, no. Who was she? Nobody. I was only kidding, Edna. Oh, as if I care. As if any other woman would look at you. I wonder why I ever did. I don't know. Edna. Edna. I won't be home tomorrow night either, Edna. I have to go back to that carnival again. There's something I have to find out. gonna be no next show. We've been rained out. But I came all the way out here. Come back tomorrow night. Mister. Mister. What do you want? I'm willing to pay a quarter. Thirty-five cents? Ain't I seen you before? Yes, I, I was here last night. So why do you want to go again? Because of the fish. Yeah, the fish, uh, uh, I, that's my hobby. Fish? Yeah. Yeah, rare fish. And that's the rarest fish I've ever seen. It is? Yeah, absolutely. As you said, uh, uh, some of the world's leading scientists have come here just to study it. So you can't blame me for wanting to see it again. Come back tomorrow night. Well, I can't come tomorrow night. I'm busy. Can I see it now? We don't give a performance. We're only one customer. Oh, I don't want a performance. I, I just want to study that fish. 
please, it, it's very important to me. Fifty cents. Make it snappy. Thank you. And don't touch anything. No, sir. Cassandra. Cassandra. It's me, Harold Potter. I, I was here last night. You spoke to me. Cassandra? Pull the cord at the side of the curtain. Oh, yes. Yes. I have it. Hello, Harold Potter. Hello, Miss Cassandra. You have a kind voice, Harold Potter. Thank you. A kind voice, but an unhappy one. Are you very unhappy, Harold Potter? Oh, I, I guess so. Why? Never mind me. What about you? What about me? Doesn't he treat you properly? Properly? <laughs> Why, is he mean to you? All the time. Well, can I do something? What? I don't know. Uh... Maybe I can report him to somebody. Oh, no, don't, please. He'll just take it out on me. That's so awful. Why don't you quit? How can I? He never lets me out of this chair. It's terrible. Night after night after night, all those faces staring at me. Never seeing the outside. The stars. The moon. Oh, I can't stand it anymore. I have to get out of here. Help me, Harold. I will. Tomorrow night's our last night here. Don't let me leave here like this. I won't. I won't. I'll, I'll think of something. I'll think of some way... What are you doing here? I, uh... <clears throat> I, I lost my way. I couldn't find the exit. Over there. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, that's a wonderful fish you've got there. Beat it. Yes, sir. Good night. Told you to cut out the gab. You want to cause more trouble? That you will go straight to the cops. I'll teach you to do like I said. Oh, no, don't. Please. I'll teach you. That poor man. He's so starved for a kind word, he'll take solace anywhere he can get it. Even from a headless woman in a sideshow. Well, they say everyone has a soulmate somewhere. His may just have an electrical appliance for a head. Hey, look on the bright side. She makes a great lamp. Quite a conversation piece. And she starts her own conversations. <laughs> Let's see if this budding romance blossoms, or if that sinister carnival barker nips it in the bud, as we move on to part two of Sideshow from way out. But first, the Lamplighters have a rather outdated musical message for us you may feel free to ignore. If you're looking for fine tobacco, if you're looking for flavor too, if you're looking for fresher smoking, well, brother, we're telling you, from the first cigarette in the morning to the last cigarette at night, what you want is an L and M. Smoke after smoke, your taste stays fresh. L&M's fine tobaccos always taste better. They're fresher when you smoke them, never drying to your taste. The secret? L&M tobaccos are moisturized, a special way called Flavor Seal, to seal in freshness and flavor. Start fresh any time of day with L&M, that's what I say. Stay fresh day after day with L&M, that's the way unlock a whole new world. Food, ha! 
Harold. You have to give each mouthful a chance to digest. Yes, dear. Eat a mile a minute, and then when your stomach hurts, you blame my cooking. I don't blame your cooking. Oh, you don't. imply it. Where are you going? I have to go out. What do you mean you have to go out? I have to see someone. Who? A uh, friend. There you go implying again, Harold. You trying to make me think there's a girlfriend? You trying to make me feel jealous? No, dear. I know where you're going. You're going to that old carnival again. Maybe. Hmm. Is that where your girlfriend is? What is she, the bearded lady? Now what are you doing? Now don't mess up in there. I just cleaned under there. Where are the pliers? They're in there. Here. What do you want the pliers for? Harold? Harold, I asked you a question, Harold. What are you going to do with that? I need these. Oh, now don't start fixing things again. You know how hopeless you are with tools. Remember the time you fixed the television we had to get the repairman and cost us so much money? The time you fixed the washing machine and that big flood? I'm not going to fix anything, dear. Then what do you need with the pliers? Harold, where are you going? I won't be long yet. Harold, I asked you a question. Where are you going? Just out. To see a bearded lady. Harold, you... Harold, you... Harold, you come back in here. Now, I don't like jokes. Harold! Here we go, here we go. The final performance of the House of Thrills and Horrors is about to begin for your pleasure and amazement. Your very final chance to see the wonder fish that changes color. Your very last chance to see a real execution like only the French know how to do it. Your very last chance to see Cassandra, the electric woman. One, please. Another gentleman who will be glad not to miss this opportunity. One dime, please. You again. One ticket. One ticket, please. Scram. I wish to see the show. Look, buddy, I don't know what your game is, but don't cause me any trouble. I am not causing any trouble. I simply wish to see the next show, and there's my dime. I suppose you want to see the fish again. Yes. Yes, I, I, I want to study it some more. Well, look, buddy, let me tell you a little secret. For your own good, start running and don't show your face around here again. You get me? <laughs> Can you imagine that guy trying to hand me a lead dime? <laughs> okay, folks. Here we go. Stay close together. Don't want to lose anybody this trip. Here we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our performance. Thank you for your interest and courteous attention. Leave by that exit, if you please. Sandra. Harold, where are you? I'm right here. Is the coast clear? Yes, he's gone. Oh, I knew you'd come back. I knew you wouldn't fail me. I brought these pliers. Why? To set you free. Oh, Harold. I told you I would. Wait. What's the matter? Why are you so unhappy, Harold? Well, I'll tell you later. Now let me take those clamps off your wrist. No. First, tell me. Why are you unhappy? Well, you know, there's Edna, my wife. She doesn't appreciate you. And there's my job. I hate my job. There's my bad stomach. Poor Harold. Look, he may come back. We'd better hurry. No, I... he won't. That was the last show. He's packing up now. Come a little closer, Harold. There, that's fine. You know what I think? No, what? I think Harold doesn't suit you. It's not romantic enough. I'm going to give you a different name. All right, but... What shall I call you? Lancelot? <laughs> Romeo? No. Casanova? Oh, yes. Casanova. 
that. That's nice. But now let me get you out of there. Are you sure you want to? Of course I'm sure. All right then. You may set me free. I'm sure. Oh, is everything closed? What does it look like? I asked you a civilized question, and I expect a civilized answer. Okay, okay, lady. Everything is closed. That's better. Just a minute. Where will I find the bearded lady? What bearded lady? The one who works in this horrible place. We got no bearded lady. Well, Harold must be here someplace. Who? Harold Potter, my husband. Have you seen him? He's 40, looks a little older. Five feet nine, underweight, and has an ulcer. I ain't seen him. Well, I know what he's up to. He thinks he's going to run away. What's in there? Nothing. Well, I'll see for myself. You can't go in there. Why not? How do I know Harold isn't in there? We got no Harold. Stand aside. Look, lady, we're closed. We're packing up. Now, I am going in there to see if Harold's in there. Now, do I go in alone, or do I summon a policeman to go with me? Harold? Are you in here? Harold? Oh! Harold? You come out of there. You know I don't like playing jokes. Excuse me, I'm looking for someone. My husband. He's uh, five feet nine and, and underweight. Does this look like him? Of course not. How could it be? His name isn't Harold. It's Casanova. How disgusting. Shh. You hurt his feelings. He used to be very handsome. Before he lost his head. For two days every summer, the fair, with all its roundabouts and sideshows, comes to our village at home. And its chief attraction is unquestionably the bearded lady. The public queues up all evening round the tent just to get a quick look at her. And yet, I happen to know that this particular bearded lady is nothing but a terrific fraud. She's not a lady at all. She's not even a woman. She's a billy goat. And they shave him all over every week except for his face. But the customers don't spot it. They're all convinced that it's a human female. Which is really rather curious when you stop to think about it. Don't you agree? We'll have another one for you next week at the same time. Good night and sleep well. <laughs> So poor Harold thought it was all a trick done with mirrors. I guess he never was too bright. 
Although I guess he's pretty bright now. <laughs> yeah. uh, if poor Harold, you know, I can't seem to call him anything else besides that. If poor Harold looked familiar to you, it's because he was played by familiar character actor Murray Hamilton, best known as Mayor Vaughn from the 1977 classic Jaws. And his wife Edna was played by a young Doris Roberts, who went on to co-star in the popular sitcom Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> well, I hope you'll join me again next week, dear patrons, as we tour the dark depths of what TV used to be. <laughs> as always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, you're always at home in the cathode zone.